So what exactly is a deceptive cadence? Well, if you saw our last video, you know exactly what an authentic cadence is, right? We define that as the five chord of a key to the one chord of a key. So that would sound like this. F, and if we're in the key of C, F, G, C. The deceptive cadence is when you go from the five of the key to the six. So that would sound like this. F, G, A minor. And it offers a completely different texture. Let me show you three very popular and effective uses of the deceptive cadence. Goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There are three things that our sixth chord has that offer up this sort of resolved quality to it. One of them is just like the natural consonants that's in just any minor triad. Another thing that this chord offers us is the common tones uh, that it shares with our one chord and specifically what those common tones are. So in other words, when I play an A minor in the key of C, I can find two notes in this chord that it shares with our one chord, the C chord. And more importantly, what these two notes are very important. They're the tonic and medians of our key. So if I'm in the key of C and I play these chords, I go F, G, you're expecting to hear these two notes, the, the tonic and the median I was just talking about. So when I play a deceptive cadence, I get those two notes and the implied uh, resolution within them. So I go F in the key of C, F, G, and you're gonna to wanna to hear this. And if the bass is C, sounds like a perfect authentic cadence all day long. But if I do it again, then I give you that resolution with the C and the E, but now the bass is A, I have that resolution that we talked about, but now embedded inside of a deceptive cadence, giving us, again, a very different texture and mood that's really cool to play with. Uh, when you're doing your songwriting, or just really cool to observe when you're listening uh, to other music as well. One last thing that the Deceptive Cadence offers us is nice sound bass movement. We're constantly going on and on about bass movement being really solid as it relates to stepwise movement or fifths. And the Deceptive Cadence gives us that latter stepwise movement that I just talked about. So we have F, G, A. And the bass just boom, boom, boom. And it's these three elements that give our deceptive cadence its uh, property of resolution in a slightly different manner. So let's take a look at the deceptive cadence and how it was used in those three examples that we showed you earlier. We'll start, I guess, with that police song. Might be playing some of these examples in different keys uh, than the recording, so. Every breath you take, every move you make, every bond you break, every step you take, I'll be watching you. So right there, right halfway through the middle of that first verse, you hear our first implementation of the deceptive cadence in that police song. Four, five, six. And what's really cool is at the end of that verse, you get to hear a back-to-back -back usage of these two cadences and how different the mood and texture of each one is, while they both offer up a sort of sense 
of resolution. So yeah, at the end of the first verse, you'll hear every game you play, every night you stay, I'll be watching you. And it goes right into the chorus. Great example of how to use both of these perfect and deceptive cadences. What these two halves of this first verse also illustrate is this like sense of finality that the authentic cadence has that the deceptive cadence doesn't quite give us. While it does give us that resolution, it just sort of kind of like yearns to go somewhere else afterwards. Which is why the police's implementation of this chord is so cool because like they're not done telling the story of that first verse yet, the first time you hear that deceptive cadence. And it isn't until they're done telling the story that is the verse that you hear that more final period-esque authentic cadence. Period-esque as if it was like a sentence, like in the grammatical sense, right? It's a great way to wrap up this harmonic sequence. So our next example, I Will, by the Beatles also has a deceptive cadence. Not only that, it uses it in pretty much the same exact way that the police use it in every breath you take. So let's do this in the key of D. You're gonna see our A to B minor. You're gonna see that deceptive cadence halfway through the phrase when we're not quite done with the storyline yet. And then at the end of the verse, you're gonna hear that authentic cadence. Will I wait a lonely lifetime? If you want me to, I will. So there you hear it again, right? Like they're kind of not done telling their story. So we have this like comma, if you will, instead of a period, the deceptive cadence, the A going to the B minor. And it isn't until they get to the end of the verse where you have the authentic cadence show up. And the amount of resolution these two cadences offer us is so similar that I could swap out this six chord, I could swap out this deceptive cadence with an authentic cadence both times, and it'll still work. Will I wait a lonely lifetime? If you want me to, I will. So there, both times I use the D instead of the B minor. Both times I use the authentic cadence and it still worked. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fold and the major lift. This is a really cool example of how, like I said before, it's in the middle of the phrase. And also that rare instance where the lyrics of the song are literally describing what's happening, right? It goes like this, the fourth, the D, the fifth, the minor fall, our deceptive cadence and the major lift back to the four chord, which is a major chord. Just a really cool observation there. But here, anyways, here, this is one of these instances. So, okay, so we just got done talking about how uh, sometimes you can swap out the deceptive with the perfect authentic and vice versa. I don't know that that works so much here. While, like I said, on paper it should, uh, there's something about the mood of the song and the melody and the lyrics and where it is within the phrase that if I were to replace this uh, deceptive cadence with an authentic cadence, it doesn't really work. Let me show you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift. So I'd probably have to do that like four more times in a row for it to sort of legitimize itself. Like if I repeated it enough, it might eventually take to your ear and your expectations are no longer being subverted. But the idea of the deceptive cadence offering us a different mood or a different texture could not be more clearly illustrated, I think, than uh, in this instance of Hallelujah. When you look at today's concept or ideas superimposed on a map of tonal harmony, it's maybe a little easier to understand why these two things are so closely related. You can see how both chords, the six and the one, occupy the same region of the map, that tonic region of the map. And you can further see how these paths and how to get there from the five uh, to the one or the five to the six also are very similar. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay up to date on current content. YouTube seems to think you're gonna like these videos over here and here, so go ahead and stick around and check those out. We'd really appreciate it. 
Thanks again for watching. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift.